All right. Circling back to that question, the original question of that I asked you because I was trying to draw you in on this one. Uh, did you believe that student loan student loan forgiveness was the cause of inflation? And then you know you stated your point and right, right. And I already know uh, if we didn't get any hate comments, we will get some. Well, after what I say, uh, I believe the total fiscal policy from 2020 after COVID happened, that is the cause of cause of inflation. And what I mean by that is, now follow me here. Don't lose me here. Now, if you got anything, just let me know, but follow me here. So in 2020, and we're not going to even talk about the Fed. We're only going to talk about what the presidents did. No Fed. We're just going to talk about the presidents. All right. And the administrations. All right. So now when the when Trump Trump gave out stimulus money, people didn't even lose jobs at this point. You know, it was stuff was closed down and things like that. And the service industry was impacted. So let me take that back. The service industry was impacted. So the service industry was impacted and then impacted heavily. It's a couple scattered here and there, but service industry was the most. And then they gave the unemployment, the enhanced unemployment. So that raised people's income. A lot of people, it was way more than they was used to making. Then you add on top of that, the stimulus money that came in, uh, I believe uh, Trump, brought in two stimulus packages and Biden brought in one. And then they had this enhanced employment. So this is why I believe it was only this that raised it. Besides, besides the fact, you know, the Fed did lower interest rates, but this is why I believe this was the main cause of inflation. Because the rich, the wealthy, they already lived a set standard of lifestyle. They didn't change their lifestyle besides being in the house, but the stuff that they buy, they always bought it before, right? The people that was the people that was buying the stuff the most was the people with the enhanced unemployment benefits, with the stimulus money and things like that. It was people who had jobs like you and I and people who uh who didn't even need the money and received it. And I know of a lot of people a lot of people, they did one or two things. They went and spent the money or they invested in the stock market. But those was the factors that drove up demand. It wasn't the, you know, people in the 1%, the people in the top 10%. They already been living a lifestyle the way they've been living. They've been buying the things that they have already been buying. It was everything that the middle class and the poor was buying. That's where the demand went up. Because... If you look at it, you don't hear you don't hear about a, a shortage of supplies at Macy's, Nordstrom's, the high Louis Vuitton, or anything like that. You didn't hear about any shortages there, but you did hear it at the WalMarts, the Targets, the Ram shops, the cell phone companies, and things like that. The thing that most middle class consumers consume, and that's where it was at. And I remember talking to a business owner in Michigan. And he's been in business for 20 years and he's, you know, has a rim shop, you know, rims that you put on cars, you know, so you can look cool. Yeah. I ain't cool. So I, I think I had rims one time back in the day, but, um, <laughs> but I talked to, I talked to him and he, he told me, and I didn't tell him my philosophy on uh, where all the inflation is coming from. And this is dead in the middle of COVID. Everybody's at home, you know, working from home or whatever. And they stimulus checks coming out, the unemployment checks coming out. And he said, in six months, this is the best year I've ever had in the 20 years my business has been in. People ain't pulling up with Bentleys and Maseratis trying to get rims. There was people who was getting it. Then, of course, you throw in the PPP loan scams that was going out there and things like that. I mean, it was actual business that needed help. but you add on the people that was, you know, setting up the fake businesses, getting the PPP loan and doing it. And I've seen a lot of nefarious things done with the money. So I believe that was the prime driver of demand. And of course, the news media outlets and stuff goes, 
they're going to say it's a supply chain issue. It's a supply chain issue because they don't want to come out and say, oh, well, no, we have a demand issue. Too many people got too much money and that's the problem. Because, of course, that will push away their constituents by saying that. So they're going to blame it on the supply chain. They're going to blame it on the Chinas. They're going to blame it on everything. And is there a little supply chain issue? Little? Yes. But it is not. It's not. They're not, you know, operating at 10% of capacity in the supply chain. They're not operating at 50% of capacity. They're operating in the 70s and 80s, but they can't even operate at 100% as they was back in 2019 it would not compare to how much production and how much output they would have to do today in 2022. And I believe all of that comes from the, just look at the supplies that it's short as a supply of. Those are the areas where they're saying it's a supply chain issue. But if you just really look at it, it's all the products that the middle class and the poor buy. And that's the cause of it. And then you add on top, people haven't paid rent. And then of course, most most smart thinkers would be like, well, they weren't paying rent, they should save up so they can pay the rent. Or if they weren't paying a mortgage, they should save up and pay the mortgage, but they wasn't. Because now you see people coming off of the uh, forbearance from paying a mortgage, and now they can't afford their mortgage or they can't pay back the mortgage. So they weren't saving it, they were spending it. So the extra money that they was not spending got on mortgage that was going out there in the uh, demand side. The money that they wasn't paying on rent going out there on the demand side. The enhanced paychecks going out there on the demand side. The stimulus checks going out there on the demand side. And still, the student loans, the $800, $900 a month people was paying the student loans, that was going out on the demand side. I remember posting a video, or not a video, uh, article the other day where 91% of the people that currently on student loan forbearance said they can't pay their student loans. What was you doing before? I mean, in 2019, you was paying it. Now... It's time to pay it again. Now you can't pay it. What was you doing with all that money that you were saving that you wasn't paying the mortgage with? Because they was putting it out there on the demand side. That was the driver of the inflation, I believe. So all the hate mail, put it down in the comments there, but I expect that to come. But that is just the truth. And I always say men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Look at the numbers. Always look at the numbers. Forget what anybody say, myself included. You take what somebody say and investigate it yourself, and then you will see where the inflation came from. And that's that's my honest viewpoint on it.